Hi everyone, welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to talk a little bit about aftermarket cooling. Right here I have an Intel motherboard and attached to that Intel motherboard I have an Intel heatsink fan. This is a stock heatsink fan and if you buy a retail CPU from Intel it will come with a stock heatsink fan included. Same goes for AMD. The retail box CPUs come with that heatsink fan. You install it and it works. And while working is just fine, a lot of us out there who build our own computers want to get a little bit more out of our systems. And there's two different reasons why you might remove this stock heatsink fan and go with an aftermarket version. One would be for improved cooling to keep your temperatures on your CPU down, which will then allow you to overclock if you want to. Another reason is to reduce the amount of noise that the computer generates in general. And the stock heatsink fans are a little bit notorious for getting a bit loud once they spin up, especially if your CPU is under a heavy load. So today we're going to share a couple products. Uh, they are made by Arctic Silver, and these are to assist us with replacing a heatsink fan such as this one. The first is Arctic Silver 5, and this is thermal grease, also known, known as thermal compound, also known as thermal paste. And um, Arctic Silver 5 is one of the most well-known and most popular versions out there. This little plunger version here will work for quite a few different uh, Re replacements of CPU heatsink fans, and I'm going to show you how to apply that in just a minute. Uh, another item that we have here in this little plastic baggie, which I will open so you can get a better look, uh, also by Arctic Silver, is the Arctic Clean Thermal Surface, sorry, Thermal Material Remover and Surface Purifier. This is a two-step process, and these are made for removing the existing thermal paste that's already on there and making sure you have a nice clean surface so when you apply new thermal paste, you'll get the best performance that you can possibly achieve. So quickly today, what I'm going to show you guys is how to remove the stock Intel heatsink fan that we have here, uh, how to use the thermal material remover and surface, surface purifier to clean that surface off, and then how to install an aftermarket heatsink fan. And for that purpose, we have the Arctic Cooling Freezer 13 heatsink fan right here. So first off is removing the stock heatsink fan. And for Intel, it's not too tough. Uh, they, it uses a push pin design for mounting here. And you'll actually see there's little arrows on each of these little push pins. Those arrows might be a little confusing when you're installing a stock heatsink fan because they're actually there to show you how to remove it. So all you do is take a flathead screwdriver, rotate each of these a quarter turn counterclockwise in the direction of the arrow. That will release the four push pins down there at the bottom. And then you can slightly jiggle this to get the entire thing off of there. Now one thing that you might encounter with a stock, stock heatsink fan, which I believe I'm encountering right now, make sure you lift up on all those plungers, uh, is that the thermal grease, if it is not warm, might be pretty sticky. And um, a solution for that, if you're really having a hard time getting it off of there, is to just turn your computer on, let it run for four or five minutes, that will warm up the CPU and make that a lot easier to remove. But here you can see how I have a lot of uh, messy, dirty thermal paste, the old stuff there, um, that's on the CPU and the heatsink fan. Fortunately, the heatsink fan, since I don't need it anymore right now, I'm going to leave that to the side. But the CPU, we definitely want to get nice and clean, so when we install our new, uh, our new one, we have a good con conductive uh, connection there between the two with nice, fresh thermal paste. So starting off with dropper bottle number one, the thermal material remover, what we're going to do is put several drops onto the pad of the CPU. We want to get that thermal material nice and saturated with this stuff. Uh, we don't want to use too much because we do not want it to drop off the edge. And then we're going to wait 30 to 60 seconds to let that set in and start to break up the thermal material that's already on there. All right, so now that we've let it sit for about a minute, we want to get that thermal material cleaned up. You can use a lint-free cloth for this. I actually like to use um, coffee filters because they don't leave any lint behind. They're cheap, they're disposable. Um, I've had some folks also use um, paper towels. However, those do tend to use a lot of lint, so they don't work quite as well. But we just want to wipe that up, get all that thermal material cleaned off as much as we can. And we can see how the Arctic clean stuff there does a really good job of breaking that up and letting us just get it all right off the surface of the CPU. And now at this point, if you're looking at that CPU, uh, it's, it's looking pretty clean to me. We can see a little bit of residue left over, but this is where the step two comes in with the surface purifier. And that is our blue cap bottle number two here. 
And I'm actually going to grab one more coffee filter just for the cleanup job. Surface purifier, we don't need to let set in or anything. We just put a few more drops on there. And this is going to make it just about as clean as we can get it. Wow. And for those of you who are in the know, you can see that we're using an engineering sample CPU. But visibly, you can really just see how all of that material just gets cleaned right off of there. And um, also, uh, one other thing to mention is if you are removing an existing heat sink fan and you want to reuse that, you can use the same uh, process on the existing material that's on the bottom of the heat sink fan right there um, to clean that off if you want to reuse this one. And that will just help you get the best connection possible between the heat sink fan and the uh, CPU itself to give you the best thermals uh, possible. So now that our CPU is nice and clean, we can look to our aftermarket CPU cooler. Today we have a uh, Arctic Cooling Freezer 13. And um, when you get an aftermarket cooler, it will really depend on the cooler that you get. But some will come with a thermal paste or thermal pad pre-applied. And this one, they've given us a nice thin layer of thermal paste already pre-applied to the base of this. For today's demonstration, I actually want to show you guys how to apply the Arctic Silver itself. So what I'm going to do is clean that stuff off um, so that I can reapply and show you guys how that works. But um, for the purposes of demonstration, this is actually a really good example of what you want to go for when you're applying thermal paste. Because the, the goal that you're trying to get to is you want as thin a layer as possible of the thermal paste between the base of the heat sink fan and the uh, heat spreader on the CPU itself. What you're doing is you're filling in all the little microscopic gaps in there to allow thermal conductivity to be as efficient as possible. And Arctic Cooling has put a really thin but nice even layer of thermal paste pre-applied across the base of this. So that's sort of what you're going for. We're going to use the grain of rice method when we uh, get to actually applying this, but just from a theoretical perspective, that's kind of what you're going for when you're applying thermal paste. But what I need to do right now is use a little bit more of my cleaner to clean this off so I can show you guys how to install that. All right, guys, so here is our Freezer 13 aftermarket heat sink fan. As you can see, I've cleaned all of that thermal paste off, so we have a nice, clean surface there. There is our uh, Intel CPU. I've mounted the Freezer 13's mounting bracket to the motherboard here. Um, keep bear in mind, if you do get this particular CPU cooler, you can mount this bracket this way to have a vertical orientation, or you can rotate it 90 degrees so you can have a horizontal orientation. Uh, unfortunately, Oh, I should also mention that you remove this little 92 millimeter fan from that as well. Uh, fortunately, once we've got the bracket on, the installation of this heatsink fan itself is fairly simple. Uh, there's a bracket on either end there, and you simply line that up on top of the CPU with the holes above the mounting points on the plastic bracket, bolt that in from the top with the threaded screws, and then you're nice and secure. There's a bit of give there, so you can actually secure it down nice and tight on top of the thermal paste. So right now I'm just lining it up to make sure everything is ready to go, because once I get the thermal paste on there, I'm going to want to do this all at once. So here is our Arctic Silver thermal, thermal paste, and there are varying um, fields of discussion as far as thermal paste application goes. Again, the general principles, what you should bear in mind, you want a little bit on there. You don't want to put too much. So today we're going to be using the grain of rice method. We're going to be using a single dollop in the middle of the CPU's heat spreader. We want somewhere between a grain of rice and the size of a pea. That should be just about enough. And what we're going to do, because Arctic Silver is a little bit more on the, a uh, little bit more towards the liquid side than the solid side, we're going to let it spread out all by itself using just the pressure of the heat sink on the CPU itself, as well as once we power up the uh, computer, that heat will also help the thermal grease spread out more. So we want to line this up directly above. We're going to drop it down as straight as we possibly can on top of there. We will feel that thermal paste start to smoosh and spread out just a little bit. I usually give it just a little bit of a wiggle to make sure that it's going down on there nice and smooth and straight. Now it is lined up. 
So there we can let it be and start to bolt it down with the included screws. So we got one here at the back, which I'm just going to get threaded and started out there before I actually start to put any pressure down. Again, we do not want to put pressure on one side or the other disproportionately because that could put a little bit of extra stress on the socket, which we do want to avoid if possible. Once our bolts are started, I'm just going to slowly give a little bit of torque to each one on either side back and forth until it's nice and secure on the bracket there. And the pressure will keep the base plate of our heat sink fan up against the CPU. It will spread out that thermal paste to give us a nice good contact between the heat sink fan and the CPU heat spreader. That should be just about good. Uh, now, of course, we can't forget that once this is mounted, we want to snap our fan back onto the heat sink fan, plug that in. Another great thing to do is to set up your thermal paste. Uh, once you have it installed, you should boot up your computer. If you have a benchmarking application or possibly a CPU burn-in utility, uh, Lynx or Prime95 are great ones to use. They just max out your CPU temperatures shoot up. You can keep an eye on your temperatures and see how well your new uh, aftermarket heatsink fan is performing. And also that will help the uh, thermal paste itself set in and will give a few degrees better performance over time if you, uh, as compared to right after you first boot up your computer. So once again, our featured products for today, the Arctic Silver Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remover and Surface Purifier, as well as the Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Grease. And of course, our Arctic Cooling Freezer 13 aftermarket heatsink fan. For New Egg TV, my name is Paul. Thank you very much for watching today, everyone, and we'll see you next time.